City. It's the Wendy Williams Show. Everybody is trying to heal the rift between her ex. I don't th- the divorce is not finalized. No. Nope. Uh, yeah, between her soon to be ex husband, and this has been going on, by the way, for years. I don't I have no idea why these people aren't fully divorced, but you know, whatever. <laughs> between Brad and their oldest son, Maddox. Well, this is a real situation, honey. Do you remember back in 2016 when Brad and Maddox got into a fight on a private jet? <laughs> We talked about it on Hot Topics, and it led to what Angelina's side is saying, her filing divorce. Well, one fight with a father and son doesn't necessarily lead to divorce. There had to have been like the ground swelling already, because Maddox is now 18 years old, and you know, fathers and sons do fight. They, they, they fight, whether it's physically or whether it's with words, you know, things happen, and, and it, I don't like it, but things happen. So there probably was a groundswell, but this fight on the private jet, she'd had it. Well now, do you know that Brad and Maddox have not spoken since? In other words, he and his son have not spoken in years. Yes, yes. Well, Maddox is now away at college. He goes to college in South Korea, where by the way, he's living in a dormitory, which by the way, I have no problem with. You know, all of his life, we've never seen any of those Jolie Pitt kids play with anybody else. They've got, you know, all 25 of them to, <laughs> to play with. And, you know, being that the parents are super wealthy, of course he could live in an apartment with a housekeeper and a driver and all that stuff. But you wanna know what? And we don't know this life, but just imagine if you were Maddox. It'd be nice to live in a dormitory and make new friends and, and you know, he's in South Korea at school, and not to be a Jolie Pitt, but just to be Maddox, goes it alone. Mm-hmm. Let's show a full shot of the most recent, do we have a shot of the most recent Maddox? Yeah, he, I think um, with Angelina, oh. Uh, y- yes, well, that's an 18 year old. Must be a hard life being a Jolie Pitt. <laughs> anyway, according to Us Weekly magazine, Brad has reportedly talked to Angelina about visiting Brad, uh, Maddox. Now, I don't know what happened on the plane, but you have to figure, you know how sons stick up for their moms, how dad might be foul, and Brad admitted that, you know, there was drinking involved, as my recollection, right? We did this on Hot Topics. Uh-huh. It was, he was drinking on the plane, so he probably got real loud. I don't know whether he called him an ethnic name. Yes, I'm going there or whether he called his mom the B word, but not in, a, not in a fun kind of way, but in a kind of way. I don't know what happened on this plane, but you know, it's a lot for a son, particularly because, I mean, all kids have it hard just being a kid, but it's gotta be even harder when you're a kid and you're adopted from another country. You know, it's, it's gotta be even harder.
Now, now, Angelina adopted Maddox when she was a single woman. So when Brad met Angelina after he che she cheated on him with um, Jennifer Aniston, she already had Maddox. He was adopted, and, and, and I don't know for a fact, but I'm assuming that maybe when Brad and Angelina finally got married, that Brad adopted Maddox. So that would make him the father, not a biological father. Again, I don't know the adoption thing, but for those of you all who are adopted, I know a lot of adopted people, and they do have a tick of, damn, why wasn't I good enough? Where are my real parents? I mean, I love the people who adopted me, but you know, what is it? So anyway, Angelina reached out to their son um, to help him reconnect with, um, well, no, here's the thing. She didn't reach out to him. She always talks to him. But I think that this is the perfect time of year to have like a really well thought out family Thanksgiving dinner. Yes. You know what I mean? And, and mom and dad should put their differences aside because they have a bunch of other adopted kids too. So it, you know, in other words, dad, if you can do this to Maddox, you know, then, then you can do this to me. You haven't talked to me for two years. Now, we don't know whether Brad's tried to reach out to this boy, I must say that. Brad, he might be blocked on Maddox's phone. <laughs> All right. But Brad, Brad can fly to Korea and squat outside the dorm. I mean, there are things that parents could do, particularly if you have endless amounts of money. If you really want to reconnect with this boy, then leave Angelina out of it, and you go over there, and basically you stalk him in the name of love over to South Korea. You know? So, here's the other thing. I've never heard Maddox speak. I don't know how he talks, you know what I mean? And so a reporter, yes, they have paparazzi in Korea too. A reporter caught up with Maddox in Korea. Look, 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 look. Remember, he's 18. He's, he's all by himself and he actually stopped and talked. You have to listen very closely. Co-host, please no oohs and ahs and claps and woo! You know how you all do. Just, <laughs> just, just listen very closely, because this might be the last time we hear him speak, because he doesn't speak. You know what I mean? Very interesting, take a look. So have you spoken with your siblings? Like, did you speak with your brothers and sisters? Are they happy that you're here? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. Yeah? So, yeah? How about your dad? Is he gonna come and visit? Do you want him to come and visit? Uh, I don't know about that. What's happening? No, you don't know what's gonna happen with that? You, are you, is your relationship with him sort of over or? Uh, well, whatever happens, happens. Sad, right? Sad on one hand. On the other hand, 18, they consider that an adult these days. Um, it doesn't seem like he cares one way or the other whether Brad gets back with him, but he also didn't say that Brad is shut out. So Brad, this is your chance to take off from being you know, hot and a big timer and get over to South Korea and fix this. That's all I'm saying. <sighs> with Don Power Wash and spray your dishes clean. So, salt and pepper got the last laugh on Russell Simmons. Well, here's what happened. First of all, I was telling you already that there's gonna be an E! True Hollywood story with Yo-Yo and um, the brat. I love the E! True, I, like I was telling, I didn't even know that they're still doing these, but they sat down for an E! True Hollywood story about female rappers. It's the same one that Yo-Yo and the brat are in. So this is gonna be so good. I can't wait to see this one. Anyway, it happens on Sunday, but look. They said that Russell got at them and that him, re him rejecting them fueled them to want to be successful regardless. Take a look. Someone happened to ask him about the salt and pepper girls, what do you think? And Russell gave us a thumbs down. And I remember feeling like I can either listen to the father of hip hop and fold, or I can use that as fuel. We were never intimidated. When they said we couldn't, we did. And then years later, Russell tried to sign us to Def Jam. And we was like, no, we good. And the rest is history.
it just goes to show you, just because somebody tells you no, even if it's no from the highest up, and yeah, you know, at that particular time, Russell was the everything to hip hop. I mean, he'll go down as an icon and whatnot to hip hop now, but I'm saying back then, can you imagine how much it would have hurt? You know, these two girls who used to work together at Sears from Queens, you know, and all they want to do is get together and have a group, and then Russell, Russell says, no. But do you, do you know how much it probably really fueled their thirst for success to tell him, no, thank you. I like that. Like you got, that's all, yeah. I don't know whether it's an all time thing, but sometimes like you have one time to reject somebody before they become great and then you wanna come back and do, no, I was here all along. You know what I mean? But, yeah. All right, so I'm late to the party for The Bachelor. You know I don't, don't watch that show, but I did watch for the Rachel Lindsay one and I really enjoyed it and then I really liked the Hannah one. So now I'm in, except not so much anymore. Well, I'm gonna tell you why. So the next season of The Bachelor is filming right now and we all know that these reality shows have a certain part of them that are staged and fake. I think we know that as thinking people, everything is not real that you're seeing. But we caught him in the act. Take a look. Wait, hold on now. Those are the, the, the girl and the guy, right? They're walking out to get on a bus, went Erp! They say stop, good, okay. Then there's the producer right here in the black coat talking to the guy, the girl is way back there. She, this, this is the bachelorette, right, way back there. And then the producer's obviously saying to him, you guys look more, rom more romantical and walk that out, back out again. Three, two, one, <laughs> go. See, and there's the bachelor and bachelorette walking back out. Uh-huh, and then they, and cut. <laughs> like, I am, I mean, even though we know that everything that we see is not real, and even though I'm on a TV insider, even I watching as a, as a you know, new person watching the show, I am so disappointed that there's gotta be something else on Monday besides this. <laughs> like, like, here's the thing. You know that they do redos, but you don't wanna see, there's some, there's certain things that as a fan of something you don't wanna actually see. I don't want to see a redo. It didn't look like they screwed up the first time they walked out to the bus. And why are you doing this in public? You know this footage wasn't shot, shot by like a TMZ or something. It was shot by a fan standing on the outside shooting it. And then they sent it to um, a blog that, you know, cracks on reality shows. And the blog sent it out to the world and that's how we got it. Look at the producer telling, oh no, you have to do it again. Look at the girl in the back. Look at the, look at the bachelor. Look at the bachelorette. The bachelorette's just walking. You know what I mean? I mean, are the, the proposals are fake, the people are fake, the storylines are fake, the love is fake, it's all fake, but I don't wanna see it. Like, you know, don't do it in public around a bunch of people, because now we know, and I am very disappointed. <laughs> but I would imagine that like, they would repose shots in private areas, like behind the bachelor compound gates, if the bachelor and bachelorette are laying by the pool, and they say, all right, cut. You guys don't look romantic enough. Put your leg over his leg. More, you know, spread him more. Kiss him. <laughs> Wait, cut. Let's redo this kiss. But that would be private behind the compound, you know what I mean? Not for something, I don't know. We all know it's fake, but clap if you're disappointed to see this. <laughs> Ugh. So Hillary Clinton is standing up for Meghan Markle. Well, Hillary says that the way British press is treating Meghan is inexplicable, excuse me, inexplicable. She feels that Meghan is targeted because she's black. Well, people call it biracial, but you know, one dip of black, it's black. Forget the biracial, okay? She's black. And, um, and um, I, I feel like Megan would have been targeted whether she was black, white, or not. I think the first thing is she's black. 
but a close second runner is she's an American who happens to be an actress, who happened to have, who happens to have been from Crenshaw. You know what I mean? Like the black thing is definitely a part of it in my mind, but the other part of it is American, an actress, you know, already had her own thing going on. And also, no matter who you are to marry Harry, everybody would be jealous. And they're jealous, I think, of Meghan. And, and that's why I think that the press, you know, haunts her like that. You know, they're, they're, they're curious about her. They wish that an English girl would have married um, him. It, black or white, they, they wish the girl was English. And also, she's making new rules, new rules. She dresses how she wants. She goes out when she wants. She hangs out with Serena when she wants. She doesn't ask the queen's permission to sneeze. Cause she doesn't feel like she wants to. I, you know, um, I like this royal couple. I, I'm more interested in them, quite frankly, than I am in William and Kate. I'm not as interested in William and Kate as I am as in Harry and, and uh, Meghan. But anyway, Hillary, Hillary's, Hillary's all in too. All right, everybody. It's now time for the Hot Five. Hit it. <laughs> Here to count down the hottest things in pop culture is our friend from People Now, Jeremy Parsons. Hey, Wendy, so good to see you. Hi, Jeremy. Happy season 11. I enjoy your stick pin. Thank you so much. Oh, you like that? A little, yes. It's just a little something. Oh, yes. I thought it worked. Mm -hmm. You want to start with number five? Yes, number five. All right, number five is a docu-series, Hip Hop, The Songs That Shook America. I'm it's, in. All right, yeah. So this is a big deal. This is a six episode docu-series. It's about hip hop songs that kind of broke through barriers and changed hip hop forever. forever. Questlove and uh, Black Thought from The Roots are producing this. Questlove oh, yeah. had this great quote. He said that these were songs that propelled hip hop into the mainstream, right? They, had, they played a key role in that. Each episode focuses on one song. So the first episode already aired, Jesus Walks by Kanye. Where was I? Wait, what? What uh, well, happened? Happened. You, but you, can you can check it out still on AMC. Oh, we'll get okay, to that okay. where you can watch it. On but AMC? Jesus Walks from Kanye and, and brought about religion and brought rap together, created a conversation around that. Sunday's episode is about All Right by Kendrick Lamar, obviously became the anthem in the uh, Black Lives Matter movement. A lot of people rallied around that song. So we're gonna hear from these artists. Some other songs are Rockbox, Elevators, The Bridge, Ladies First by Queen Latifah. Queen Latifah talking about playing such an incredible role in a male-dominated industry. We're getting these one-on-one -on -one interviews with these artists throughout this series, so it's gonna be really great. Artists and hip-hop aficionados. Absolutely, and, and groundbreakers and pioneers in all of it. The first episode premiered Sunday. You can catch uh, that on demand. Second one airs this Sunday at midnight on AMC. A little late. Oh, that's why. you can why. DVR it. Set the oh, DVR. That's why. I that's don't why. have one. <laughs> you gotta get one. You gotta get the DVR. All right. We ready? We ready for <laughs> no DVR for you. <laughs> you ready for number four? Yes. Please. Number four is Maleficent, Mistress of Evil. Okay. Open today. This one might take Joker off the top of the box office. Angelina Jolie reprising that role, obviously, as the evil Maleficent. Look at her. She's Sleeping Beauty's adopted Michelle mother. Michelle Pfeiffer, too. Michelle Pfeiffer, wow. Oscar nominee. She's joining the cast as Angelina's rival, plays this very icy queen. In the movie, Sleeping Beauty is set to marry Michelle Pfeiffer's son, Prince Philip. Guess who doesn't like it? Angelina, the two battle it out. It's just incredible to see these two powerhouse women. Fight, 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 well, fight, fight. But, but this great battle, these battles break out. Look at this, it's epic in scope. The visuals in this are really incredible. Um, look, I love seeing these two women lead an action-packed movie is like Is there this. a financial projection? There is a financial projection, thank you for asking. 175 million is projected for the opening weekend. Oh. The last movie did like 758 million worldwide. This is gonna wow. be huge, so you can check it out. Maleficent, Mistress of Evil. Oh. out now. Okay. What's number three? This is the hot five. Yeah, number three on the hot five. L's women in Hollywood issue. So, every year, L celebrates women in Hollywood who broke barriers and in some way impacted the world or their industry. Mm -hmm. 10 different covers with 10 different women, uh, including Nicole Kidman, Zendaya, Dolly Parton. That's a lot of covers. A lot of covers. Lena Waithe and the, the women behind the upcoming movie Queen and Slim, Gwyneth Paltrow, Mindy Kaling, Scarlett Johansson, Natalie Portman. Look at those. They're beautiful covers uh, and, and really incredible in-depth stories. interviews with each woman? Interviews with each one. They're very raw and very real throughout it. Zendaya, who is having the most amazing year ever with euphoria sure 
Oh my goodness, she's everywhere. Look at her. Euphoria became such a hit. But she gets very real about the anxiety. What is Euphoria? Euphoria is the show, her series. Okay. Yeah, yeah you got to check it out. By the way, not for the kids. It's super dark and very okay. grown up. Oh, my father watches that. Oh, does he? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hi, Daddy. Yes, yes, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So he knows what we're talking about here. But, but she actually opened up about having a lot of anxiety when it came to just life in general. She's an introvert. But then in filming Euphoria, she would be really anxious on set. But then the way it's been received by your dad and the critics and yeah. the audience has helped her build the confidence. So she Good opens up her. about that. We also have Dolly Parton opening up about early on in her career, people told her she needed to change her look. To she sure did. To, she, well, to, well, she changed it all right. She, well, she, you know what? She ended up really owning it and being who she was and, and kind of got the last laugh. And she did say that if she hadn't been born a girl, that she would have ended up being a drag queen. That was her quote, which was kind of funny. <laughs> um, Nicole Kidman. Nicole Kidman opens up about her mother inspiring her that when she got married to Keith Urban, her mom was like, look, don't give up everything for your marriage. And then she ended up launching a production company and kind of started producing at the, you know, after her mom encouraged her. Mindy yeah. Kaling opens up in this as well about some of the things that she faced. She says that she's always felt like an outsider in Hollywood and it's helped keep her humble. She tells this story of walking onto the set of the Mindy Project, a security guard stopping her and asking where she was going. Didn't recognize her. She ends up pointing to a billboard right there with her face on it. And then she's like, okay. So she's always felt like an outsider, but yeah. it's ended up giving her good perspective. Good for her. Yeah, so all those stories and more. Elle's Women in Hollywood, November issue. New standard. Okay, Excuse we're me. on number two, hot five. Number two. Well, this one's a hot one. Ronan Farrow's new book, Catch and Kill. So. Everyone's talking about this. If you don't know, journalist Ronan Farrow is the guy who's reporting brought Harvey Weinstein down. 13 yeah. women accused Weinstein of sexual misconduct. Uh, he took down the most powerful man in Hollywood. A lot of wild things happened behind the scenes. Tell about the Weinstein thing in yeah. him. I'm well, telling so, you, so he is brave. So he accuses, or his accusations are that Weinstein actually hired an international spy company to, to spy on him. He alleges that his phone was tapped that he was intimidated and that his witnesses, his sources were intimidated. Uh, and, he had, and he had to move. Death threats, he had to move. He started going to gun ranges and, and he's things. still going hard. He's still going hard, he is. Um, it, it, it kind of goes into all that. It also uh, breaks down the whole way he took on NBC News throughout oh all God. of this, right? Ronan worked for NBC. He alleges that they tried to kill the Harvey Weinstein story that he was working on. And then he alleges that it was because uh, that Weinstein had threatened to expose Matt Lauer which we now know everything that sort of came out in those allegations. NBC, according to him, didn't want to risk everything. NBC, by the way, has denied all of this. That's not their story at all. He also, in this book, talks about uh, the interview with the woman who accused Matt Lauer of rape, Brooke Nevels. Uh, it was her account of rape that ended up leading to Matt Lauer being fired from the Today Show. Matt Lauer has released statements refuting all this. Anyway, it's an explosive bombshell of a book. You can check it out. Catch and Kill is available right now. Right now. Okay, and the number one thing on our Hot Five list, Number Jeremy. one on our Hot Five, Tina, the Tina Turner musical. Yeah. There we go. People are excited for this one. Tina Turner, one of the world's most accomplished artists, 12 Grammys. Uh, look, her life was already a hit movie. What's Love Got to Do With It? Angela Bassett, we yeah. remember that. Uh huh. Now it's going to Broadway. We're all very excited. Um, it, yeah, that's right. It deserves some applause even more. Um, is she down with this play? Tina is down with it. She's very excited that she's finally made it to Broadway as if she needs to accomplish anything. Like, right. she's, she's done it all. But this is going to cover her life from her humble beginnings in Tennessee to becoming this global queen of rock and roll. I love this. Great music uh, and her relationship with Ike Turner as well. Fabulous. It's going to be covered. So some of the songs, Proud Mary, Private Dancer, Simply the Best, What's Love Got to Do With It? We're going to be singing and dancing the entire show. Love it. <laughs> Give it up to Jeremy Parsons, everybody. Check it out. Make sure you pick up, pick up your copy of People Magazine. It's on newsstands now. More great show for you. All rise. <laughs> Judge Wendy is next. So grab a snack and come on.